Are you a Mac user who wants to take your presentations to the next level, but maybe your computer is not strong enough to run a streaming software, so you can't set up a full production, but you really do want to make your presentations pop? Well, Keynote has a new update that actually is a really big change and is going to be so helpful for so many Mac users. And I cannot wait to get into this. You can add live video directly into your keynote presentation, meaning you can show up on your slides. You can actually create your own production, like what you just saw with the title. You can actually do that in Keynote. So I am going to share how do you set that up? How do you add your camera? How do you position it on the page? What are your options? And I'm going to not only show you how to update an existing keynote presentation, I'm also gonna show you how you can do a little bit more advanced animations and really make it look like you've put together these incredible scenes that capture people's attention and will definitely help you to stand out. Now, if you have not met me before, my name is Kat and I help people to create more professional and engaging online presentations. And yes, I'm gonna show you how you can do that little animation directly in Keynote. So you don't need to have Ecamm or OBS in order to make these presentations. But I will tell you what it is and what it is not. And also an important limitation, something that you need to know if you are sharing live video feeds in your slides through Zoom or Teams, et cetera, around frame rate. So I'll talk about that at the end after we do the demonstration. Quickly, you should know that if you have not updated your operating system. That was me last week. I was hanging on to Catalina. So yes, I've officially updated my iMac to Big Sur. This update does work on Big Sur. So if you have not made that update, you will. It looks like you do have to do that in order to use this version. So it's 11.2 as of today when I am recording this. So Let's get into a slideshow. I have now taken just a few slides from an existing slideshow that I have from my course, and we are going to add a camera to it and show you how you can actually get set up with this. So let's hop over here. You're gonna see two of me for a moment because I actually already added a window here. So the, the one with the circle, that's Ecamm, and then the actual slide presentation. And maybe I will consider removing this. Let's actually do that. I'm going to remove this little animation here so that we can just focus on just having one. So this is an example of, this is Keynote that you are seeing right now. And I took a few slides from my Elevate Your Online Presentations slide deck that I have. And this is an example where I just have a small circle of me in here, but we're going to actually do a lot of different things with this. So this is one sample. The first thing I wanna show you though is how do you actually add your camera because it will default to your built-in. So if you have another camera, you have to add that source. So first let's take a look. If we actually, I'm going to delete this and we can start from scratch. So there are two ways to add live video. One is you can say insert. So up here, insert live video. That is one way. The other is if you have add media, I have it on a shortcut, but if you want to add any kind of media, photos, videos, etc., live video is an option on there. So I'm going to show live video. And this, this is my built-in. Hello, you are seeing more of my room than usual. So we don't want that. Now in this case, I have already connected my Sony. This is also more than you usually see and you're getting a sneak peek at my new lighting. So let's quickly do a little drop. So I double clicked on this so that I can actually bring this in to a level I like, and you can also adjust yourself. Now, right now I'm covering the title. I don't necessarily want that. But before I talk about all the options you have for your live video, which you can also see there's a slight delay right now, I do wanna say, how do you add a source? Because if you click, let's say we click off here, you've got this little button, this turns it on and off. If you right click and say edit source, all it's going to do is or it will actually offer the chance for you to pick your source. But this is called the Sony ZV-1. I purposely named that. If I change this, it'll actually change what I consider Sony ZV-1. So I'm gonna cancel that. But let's say I wanna add my second camera. Up here under format, so on the side, you have format and live video. When you click on source, you actually have the option to add a source. 
So now this is what you do the very first time if it's just your default and you have another camera. So I'm going to say that I want my Sony ZV-E10 and then I pick which one it is. So for me, that is the HD 60S Plus capture card. So here we have it. This is my other one off to the side so I could add that. So, whoa, <laughs> that's because I zoomed in because this was not my original source. So I can actually go up here and I can change the source and then I can kind of do this adjustment here. So that is how you add the camera so that you can see your live video sources. And that is something that you do need to do. Now on the side, when we click, make sure that this is clicked and it's live and you can go over to format live video. And this is where you can scale. So you can adjust it here, but in order to actually drag it around, you double click until you see this option here, which allows, it gives you the slider, but it also gives you the opportunity to move your camera. You also have the mask option. So right now I am in 16 by nine ratio. So that wide ratio, which is great if you actually want to fill the entire slide. You can also change it to a more standard for well, I wouldn't call it standard anymore, but this is where you can choose a circle, a square or custom. So if I chose custom, I can actually just kind of drag it however I like. Oops, let's say done here. I can drag this off to the side if I wanted to. And I have the option for any the square or custom. You can actually start to curve the corners if I wanted to have a little bit of a curve here. Now this, I want to actually move this. So maybe I would create a slide here and position myself here and I can talk about virtual presenting. So now what I've done is I've taken an existing slide and I have added myself into it. The other thing you can do, let's say you have just some bullet points. Something I would consider is taking these bullet points, moving them off to the side, maybe having this look a little bit more like an alignment here. And then I would add my video. So live video, it's going to <laughs> default to that one. Let's go back to this camera. Got to do some adjusting. So the first time you set this up, you are going to want to spend some time setting up exactly how you want to look. And this time let's do custom and I'm going to actually try to align myself a little bit more with the corner here. Ooh, that's huge. <laughs> We don't want that. Let's zoom out a little. So here you can see how I'm basically making it look like, and I would probably, I'd move these around. So I would, you know, play around with your slides, but essentially what you can see is that I am now taking these slides and I'm inserting myself like I'm setting up a production that I would in say Ecamm. Now, if we take another example here where I have a picture, so maybe I actually want to show a picture on the first slide, but then when I wanna talk about it or the next slide right here, you can see I have the same picture, but maybe here, instead of having this photo, this is perhaps where I wanna add myself. So you can see how you can start to take an existing one and then turn this into something with live video. So now I wanna show you something that I think is even more exciting, which is take some of these custom animations and actually, turn it more into a production like I put on here today. So having your name show up or a title of what you're talking about, the lower third, have a side banner or even have some of the more interesting side animations that come in. If you have created any of those graphics in Keynote, you can just go back and add your camera directly on there. So you're essentially creating scenes in a slideshow and then treating that like a production that you would share, you would do a screen share because it's going to be a slide presentation. So let's take a look at that. And what I have done is I've put together some of the core slides that I have used in the past. So here you can see on the side, if I actually make them a little bigger, I have a blank one, which will be my main camera. I have a lower third. I have an animation with my name. I have another animation, which is the call to action animation. I have the full screen overlay and a sidebar. So let's take a look at how that will work. So first, let's just create a main camera. I'm going to, let's go this way, insert a live video. Here's the source again that we want to change. So I, this one, I've got this new Sony here. So let's try this one. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more so I can see it a bit more clearly. And I'm really just aligning this with the screen. So now in my slide presentation, 
I just actually have a main camera where I could show up and just talk to you in the presentation. You could interject this or you could start off an introduction without necessarily having just a slide while you're talking. You can actually be on the screen. Now we want to have a, a lower third, same thing, same principle applies. And we could do the duplicate, which is something I like to do where if you've positioned it the way you like it, this part I don't love <laughs> the default. I'm going to work on that. I haven't played enough. So now, now I'm behind, but if you have an object list or if you open the object list, you can simply drag your camera underneath and now you have the bar and then you could just add some text over top so that you can set that out. Now let's go to this one. Same principle applies really. <laughs> You're just going to add it. So maybe the, the next one will be more exciting. Oops. Insert live video and let's pick the other one. Let's get this set up here. Now this has a few more elements. So I'm just going to drag this down in the option, the object list. And you can see that here. Now, so now when we play this presentation, which we can do in a second, you'll see them all show up. Now this one is a more advanced animation. So if we take a look at, we click on our animate here in the top right corner. I'm going to click on the build order to open this up. This is how I preview animations. So if I say preview, this is what this one looks like. So I'm going to put myself on this side. So we'll add a custom. So let's go media live video. We are going to go to format. Oh, no, I'm not clicked on the right thing. There we go. Let's switch the camera. And I'm going to change this one to custom. And we want to move myself a little bit. Uh, let's, yeah, let's do it this way. Move this around. So I think it ended around here and move my camera in so that when I'm looking directly at the camera, I am here. And if I say done, let's move this down to the bottom and pr preview this. Okay, so it's not perfect, but you get the idea. And then we have a full title animated. This one I do not actually have it uh, in here, but we're just going to do the same thing once more. As you can see, this is pretty easy to do. We just want to pick the camera we want, position this how we like, and then we are going to drag down to the bottom. So now if we preview this, this looks familiar. You'll see that's the animated overlay. And then finally, let's just do a sidebar. We are going to add the live video. And I'm going to first drag this out and change this camera and put this to the bottom. This animation, if we preview this one, you can see that it just has all of them swiping to the side, but you can change this to anything that you like. So what you're seeing is that I'm basically creating this production like I would do in Ecamm, but I'm actually doing it in Keynote and you can intersperse this. So really what you can do, let's switch here to a regular camera. What I would personally recommend is a hybrid. You have a slideshow where you have some bullet points, some key things that you want to share, but you also start to think differently. Break outside of the idea that you need to just have a slide with words and put yourself in there or do the lower thirds, do a sidebar, do an animation, make it interesting. You can level up your presentation. So the other thing that I want to recommend for you with, with almost anything, because if you are on a meeting and you're sharing a presentation, you don't want to have your presentation take over the whole screen. So if you remember, if you've seen other videos, I have, and <laughs> so now I'm looking in the wrong direction, but you can see that I have up here, play in window up here at the top. So I purposely added this myself. I put the play in window option, but if you are looking for that, you can go to play and then present in window. So you have that option. I like having it here. So when I hit play in window, you will now see that it's actually showing. So, you, oh, it's a hiding part of it. So on my screen, I can see the controls. So I can see the slides. They're in another little window that's actually hidden from you. And so I have this slide. So if we go back, you're supposed to start it on slide one, really. That's what you're supposed to do. So let's go to slide one. 
And if we actually play this presentation and I go to the next slide, I've got my lower third. We go to the next slide and there we go. We've got the animation with my name. If we go to the next slide, we have this animation here. <laughs> and we've got our full screen title overlay here. And then we have our agenda, which we can swipe. So you can be in full control of your presentation. Now, the reason I'm showing this in the window is that when you are in, say, a Zoom call or Teams, etc., you can then share that. So let's actually open a Zoom meeting. So I'm going to open Zoom. So you can see, I'm going to go to this camera for a moment while I open it up and get it ready for you. So let's, I've started a meeting. Here we go. It says I'm muted, which I am aware of. <laughs> so here's a Zoom meeting. If I click share screen, now you can see that I have Keynote and it's in a presentation window. So I can see that presentation and I can share this presentation. But here's the catch. This is, this is a really important point. When you are sharing a screen in Zoom, and this is, I haven't tested this with the other web conferencing softwares, but it will sometimes reduce the frame rate when you are sharing your screen. And because when I was first testing this out, I thought, wow, I seem really laggy. And my, so the frame rate was slowed down. And when you look at the Zoom analytics, you can see what the frame rate is. And it was around 11, which is really, really low. So what I want you to do when you are sharing a presentation with live video is I want you to click optimize for video clip. It's down here at the bottom. This is going to increase the frame rate. You also probably don't need to share sound unless you have video or sounds in your presentation, then you can share the sound. But if you don't, if it is just static slides and you speaking, you can unselect this. Remember, if you, if you share sound, it shares every sound from your computer. So if you have a notification going off, which you should go on do not disturb, then that's gonna play as well. So it's probably a safe bet if you don't have any sounds playing in your presentation, just turn off the sound, but optimize for video clips so it will increase the frame rate so that you won't look choppy or laggy when you are presenting. So that is the consideration that I want you to know. So really, this why I love this so much is that this will open the door for so many more people. I'm just gonna close. I'm gonna close this Zoom meeting. So this opens the door for so many more Mac users to start to elevate their presentations. If you are someone who has a MacBook Air or your computer, the fan kicks in really quickly and using Ecamm or OBS just isn't working with your workflow, or maybe it's just too many things going on or you feel overwhelmed by it, this is a way that you can level up your presentations, you can show up on the screen so that you have that extra level engagement, making eye contact with your audience and actually speaking to the points on your slides. I think that's really powerful and I think this is a fantastic update. Now what it is not, it's not a replacement for the virtual camera. So if you want to be in your Zoom window with animations and with a sidebar agenda, et cetera, just in your Zoom window, then no, this does not replace that. You would still need something like OBS or Ecamm or vMix, et cetera, to use the virtual camera. But many of us just wanna have better presentations. And this is a perfect way to do this. The other thing I'll say is if you are a little overwhelmed at the idea of even getting started with Keynote, there are a lot of templates that you can buy. So already really good looking presentations, which then you could overlay your camera. You can kind of make those edits and customize it and make it your own so that you save yourself a lot of time and energy. And if you are wondering how you can make some of these animations that I showed in this demonstration, you can go back in my channel and watch how you can make custom graphics in Keynote. All of those things would apply here with this presentation that I just showed you. So I encourage you to get creative, try new things, hop into the newest version of Keynote if you are a Mac user and just try it out and see what happens because honestly, this will help you to create a more professional and engaging online presentation.